This week, you are going to learn about sampling distributions. So after these lectures and also a few exercises, you will be able to differentiate the concept of population and sample. So what is a population and what is a sample? And describe the importance of inferential statistics. Understand the concept of sampling distributions. And also calculate the probability of drawing a sample from a population. So this topic are the new topic, except the number two, which we discussed briefly in the previous lectures, the differences between inferential and also descriptive statistics. So in this lecture, we're going to discuss in detail. So in first, we're going to discuss about population. So what is a population and what is a sample and why we need to take a sample from a population. Then after that, we're going to learn what is an inferential statistic, okay, how to estimate a population parameter by using sample. The last topic of this lecture is about sampling distribution. So it's a distribution of sample mean. So population and sample. So in the last lecture, we discussed about descriptive statistics, okay, and also the parameter to describe the population variable. At the same time, we also learn about the normal distribution and also standard normal curve. Okay, so just a revision. So descriptive statistic is a statistic that we calculate to describe a data set. Okay, so the conclusion was made for the particular data set only. So there's no attempt to use statistic of the data set to draw conclusion for the whole population. So this is a concept of descriptive statistic. So we calculate the mean and standard deviation just to describe the data set. But we have no intention to use the statistic that calculated from the data set to infer the population. Theoretically speaking, we can calculate for the whole population. So we can calculate the mean and set division. Okay, we can calculate the mean and set division for the entire population. So for example, uh, we can calculate um, the mean of the body height and also set division of the body, body height for all the citizens in Malaysia. And when we get the data, the data is more likely it's normally distributed. However, practically speaking, are we really able to calculate the parameter for the entire population? Can we calculate the mean and standard deviation for the entire population? So that means that we have to measure the body height for every citizen. So in practical, it is not possible to calculate the mean by measuring the body height of everyone, then what we can do? So one way to do it is by using inferential statistic. Okay. So the inferential statistic is to use to describe the data set. So we can infer the entire population by using the statistic we calculate from the data set. So for example, instead of measuring the body height for every citizen in Malaysia, we can take a small sample, let's say Okay, random sampling of 10,000 citizens and then we measure the body height for each of these citizens. After that, we calculate the mean. And also we can calculate the standard deviation. So remember, the standard deviation and the mean is a parameter that we use to describe the distribution of data. So if the sample is good enough, then we can use this estimate, okay, this statistic or this parameter that we calculate to estimate the population mean and also the standard deviation. So we can assume that the mean and also standard deviation of the population should be very close to the mean and standard deviation that we calculated from the sample. So we can use the steady state of, a, of the data set to estimate the population steady state.
So the population in the context of this course is a pop biological population. So the sample is a collection of observations, okay, that we take from the population. So it's a collection of observations. So let's say your po your population is one million, okay, student. So we need to take a sample. So a sample is a collection of observations. So we need to take a sample. So the sample size is a number of observations. So a sample is a collection of a number of observations. Let's say we take 1,000 students. So in this case, this is our sample. So it's a collection of observations. Of course, it's not about the student. It's about the measurement that we obtain. So it's a measurement that we, that we measure from the student. So either it's a gentle body height, body weight, or student result. So the sample size is a number of observations in the collection. And the characteristic of the sample, so from now on, we will call it statistic. And the characteristic of population, we call it parameter. So we learned in the previous lecture, the characteristic that we can use to describe the data set is the mean and also standard deviation. Okay, the similar calculation, the same concept we're going to use to describe the sample and also the population. So these are the important concepts of population and sample. So we're going to go into the detail, the differences between population and sample. In terms of the size, so it's a number of observations, it depends. Okay, the population can be a very large population or can be a very small population. So let's say if I want to investigate body height of a student HS03, the conservation biology students. So my population size is about 67. So this in this case the sample size is quite small. So I can actually I can measure the body height of everyone. The population can be really large or very small. In any case, the sample is a subset of the population. So the sample is usually smaller than the population. But the size itself is depend on the size of population. So the population, so it's all entities or all observations, but the sample is a part of the population. So the measurable characteristic so in both cases, we use mean and standard deviation. Okay, so this is one of the uh, useful way to describe your data set. So for sample, we also calculate the mean and standard deviation. For population, we will calculate the mean and standard deviation as well. Although the formula is slightly different for standard deviation of sample. So we're going to go into this later. So for the measurable characteristics, so for the mean and standard deviation of population, we call it parameter. So remember in the previous lecture, we discussed how to uh, describe the parameter of a data set. So in this case, it's a population. However, for sample, we call the mean and standard deviation as statistic. So because the, the concept is slightly different, Okay, the measurable characteristic is slightly different from mean and standard deviation between population and sample. The notation or the symbol used in the formula is also different. So for example, for sample size, so this is sample size. When we describe the sample size of population, we write the capital N. Okay. And then for the sample, we write a small n. Okay, so this is a sample size. For mean, for population mean, we use the symbol mu. And then for mean of the sample or statistic of the sample, we use the S bar. Okay. For standard deviation, we use the sigma for population. For sample, we use the S. 
So for mean, the formula of the population, as we've seen before, is to sum up the value of all the observation. So this is an observation, and then you sum it up. And then divide by number of observations. So this is how you calculate the mean for the population. For standard deviation, although the symbol is slightly different, okay, so this is S bar, but the way that we calculate the mean is the same. So we just sum up all the observation and then divide by the number of observation in sample. For standard deviation, so we have, you have calculated so many times in the previous lectures, so you are quite familiar with it now. So it's a, each of the observation subtract with the mean. After that, the product you're going to square it. Okay, for each of the observation. After that, you sum all the sum of square. So this is what we call the sum of square, and then divide by total number of observation. After that, you square the value. You will get the standard deviation. So this is how you calculate the standard deviation. However, for sample, the way we calculate standard deviation is slightly different. Okay. So we still have uh, each of the observation. So we still calculate the sum of square. Okay. So we square the difference of each of the observation from mean. So this is the mean. And then we square it. After that, we sum all the value. So for this part, it's still same as uh, how we calculate the standard deviation for population. The difference is that after that, we're going to divide by n minus 1 instead of divide by n okay so this is what we call the degree of freedom after that we will get the statistic okay the standard deviation of sample so this is the main difference so you should not confuse so make sure you pay attention to the formula and the statistical test that we use later so make sure you calculate the correct standard deviation Those are the differences between the population and sample. When we talk about population, there are many types of population. So here we highlight two. So one is what we call observation populations. So it's a population that we observe. Another one is what we call the experimental population. So observation population usually is a physical population. So we can take the measurement or take, obtain the data from each of these observations directly. On the other hand, the experimental population sometimes is also what we call the imaginary and also manipulative populations. So for example, uh, I want to investigate the uh, effect of the uh, drug, let's say drug A, okay, on the weight loss. Okay. So before I conduct the experiment, there's no population in the world, okay? There's no human that I have given the drug, correct? So even though when I do the experiment, I just take a sample, I cannot give the drug to all the, the entire population. So I just take a sample. But I can imagine that actually, if I give a drug, drug to the entire population, okay, then I will get some sort of the measurement. So the measurement that I, that I can obtain here is a weight loss. But the population is a population that we imagine or the population that we going to manipulate. But we're not going to manipulate the entire population. So what we're going to do, we just take a sample okay, from the population and then give drug to the human in that particular sample. Okay. The effect of the drug you're going to measure from the sample itself. So we only can give drug to the human in that particular sample. So we will not have a population which already taken the drug. Okay, so this is what we call the experimental population. For observation population, usually it's a population or each of the observation already have their value, okay, or data that we can easily collect. Okay, so we don't need to do any manipulation. So those data are readily available. So what is a population? So it depends on the context, as you've seen before. Okay, it can be where the population size can be very large or very small, or it can be observation population or experimental populations. And it depends on your research questions. 
So the population is not referred exactly to the observation, but it's the data of your observations. And you have to check your research questions. And you have to define the population in your questions. So now what you can do, you can go back to your research questions. And in the background of your research questions, you have to define your population exactly. So you have to mention what you want to compare between two populations, the two groups. So as we discussed before, it's not possible to calculate the parameter for a population, especially when the population size are very, very large. Okay. Another thing is a hypothetical nature of population, just like the experimental population. So it is impossible that we see the effect of the drug on the population because we cannot give the drug to everyone in the population. Maybe the drug is still in the testing stage. So it's unethical to, to do that. And also in some cases, we might need to sacrifice some of the living things in order to obtain some measurement. So it's quite impossible for us to calculate the parameter for the entire population. So that's the reason why one way to encounter this problem where we cannot calculate the parameter is to do the sampling. 